Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Bloodborne, and in part four of the full playthrough walkthrough, we are going to clear out Cathedral Ward and then fight Vicar Amelia. In the previous segment, part three, we went through Old Yarnum and took down the Blood Starved Beast, which has opened up this elevator over here in uh, Cathedral Ward. So if you have not done that already, you will need to kill the Blood Starved Beast in order to open this door, which basically gives us access to Cathedral Ward. Okay, if you've never joined me for these styles of walkthrough, this is a Let's Play style walkthrough where I am recording as I play and as I talk. As a result, you may hear a little bit of background noise. I have, you know, the window open for some air. Um, and I will edit out any deaths that are not easily recovered from. I don't think I've died yet, though, which is interesting. Aside from the intentional death in the, in the beginning. My stats are as follows. I'm level 27. I have 19 vitality, 14 endurance, 20 strength, 10 skill. I am using a Hunter Axe plus 3. So I'm mostly doing an Axe playthrough. And then that has a couple blood gems on it. And then I have the Hunter garb uh, for my set. Okay. So... Oh uh, yeah, I just want to make sure I have the right stuff. Um... Yeah, so we are pretty much good to go. I don't need the Punch of Blood cocktails. I don't need the Antidote uh, anymore. So we're just going to go ahead and proceed into this room now, onto this elevator. And before we take it all the way to the top, we are going to exit early. Whoops. Sorry, I missed it. I think it's behind me. Right? Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we want to exit uh, behind us first before we actually uh, head down to the top floor. And this is basically going to bring us above um, Odin Chapel, as well as above Old Yarnum. So we're going to come over here, and then we're going to drop down here. And coming in here, we are now above... Oh, sorry, we're still in uh, the Cathedral Ward area. I thought this was above the other place. Anyway, opening this chest, we get the Formless Odin Rune, which we will not be able to use yet. Um, I will be going through... Um, Hemwick Charnel Lane in the next part of the walkthrough. So that's our first rune, but we can't actually use it yet. And we also get the Messenger Urn Festival. And then we can just drop right back into Odin Chapel. There you go. All right, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and recall the elevator. Very good. And then now we're going to take it all the way to the top. Excellent. All right, so what we're doing up here is, it may seem like a, a little side questing, but we have to come here in order to sort of infiltrate Cathedral Ward. So that's why we're up here. In this room here, there is a gentleman with a minigun on a wheelchair. So it's very important that you run to fight him. And then there is a chest over here for us to open. All right, and this chest has the Communion Rune. That guy usually has bullets on him. Okay, and then through here, there are a couple rifle dudes up there on the rafters. So you want to take care of any enemies that you can just by sort of running into the area. So this is the Healing Church Workshop, or at least the beginning of it. Oh, God. There's a... I do with a rifle in this room as well. There you go. All right, and then these guys are guarding a chest. So you want to very carefully take care of them before they, oh, yeah, before they do that, before they poke you to death. Great. All right, so we can open this chest now. And I kind of forget what's in here. Blood Tinge Gemstone, level two. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to ascend all the way up this spire. This is optional at this point, but a lot of folks do it now just because they don't know about the dead end that they're going to run into. So we're going to kill this guy real quick and then also take care of the minigun crazy dude in the wheelchair. And now we can exit here, but there will be those guys with the rifles from earlier. So you got to be careful. This guy will likely blow himself off. Yeah. He doesn't. That's okay. So there's a guy with a big brick here that we can take care of easily. We've fought this guy many times. He's not a big deal. 
But this one is leveled up a bit, so you gotta... Ugh. You gotta take care of him the best you can. Alright, get a thick cold blood. No, oh, I didn't really want to do that. That's okay, he'll probably drop a couple vials. Perfect. Alright, so now we have a choice. We can either run over here... Or, sorry, this, this goes all the way around? Yes, this goes all the way around. You always want to check the full sort of circle of the platforms. Uh, because sometimes there's treasures hidden behind. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up this ladder. And like I said, we're eventually going to run into a dead end. Um, but that dead end is important to run into because it sort of gives you a hint about a door that you cannot open. So we definitely want to visit that. There's a corpse here. With a thick cold blood, level 6. Okay, and then we're going to head in. And there's quite a few enemies here, so... Guy over there. Let's take care of the wheelchair dude first. He has a flame sprayer, that guy, so he can uh, he, he can do some damage. Okay, and then there is this guy right here. He has a flame sprayer as well, just so you can sort of see what it does. Uh, that can really sort of kill you really fast if you're not careful. I love how he laughs when he's using it. It's really funny. Okay, so we have a chest here. Go ahead and open that up. And then this has the Radiant Sword Hunter Badge, which gives you access to Ludwig's Holy Blade, which is a really, really good weapon, especially if you like strength builds. Okay, so in here, there is a locked door. You need a key in order to open this door, and believe it or not, I have a guide for that key on my old channel. So if you look up how to get the Healing Church Workshop Key, I almost guarantee you you're going to find my guide on my old channel. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the dead end. We are mostly up here for the badge, which is uh, an important item in case you want to use a different weapon. All right, but now that we have all that settled, um, let me just turn this corner here, check to see if there's anything. There is not. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to a secret place, which is the Hidden Church Workshop, or the Hidden Old Workshop, I think. I can't remember what it's called. Hidden Church Workshop? Old Abandoned Workshop? It's a secret area. <laughs> it's okay. That we'll we'll get there now. Um, you don't have to come here. However, in order to fight the real f oh god, oh how is he still alive? I thought he died. Does that mean the wheelchair guy's still alive too? Or did I totally kick him off? Okay, so there is um, a hidden area that we're gonna go to, the old abandoned workshop. And in the abandoned workshop is a very, very important item called a one-third umbilical cord. And you need to consume three of these umbilical cords in order to fight the real final boss of the game. So I'm going to show you how to get all of them, um, but getting this first one is kind of tricky. So luckily there is a note here that says Fear Beast, but this, I don't know why it says Fear Beast. What you want to do is you see these three ropes that are pointing down. They end on a platform that has, uh, I think it's a note on it. That's the platform we need to get to. Falling damage in Bloodborne is, uh, you take damage based on a percentage of your health. So you can survive it as long as you have full health. And the trick to this, I am pretty sure, it's been a while since I tried this jump, but the trick to this is to just walk off. So that's what we're going to do now. Boom. Yes. So you don't want to roll, you don't want to run, you just want to walk. And then you want to heal up, and then we want to drop onto this platform here. Very carefully. Great. And then roll into the door for some extra safety. Okay. Now we can open this door. And this door leads us to the old abandoned workshop. And the old abandoned workshop is going to look really familiar. The abandoned old workshop. So, the abandoned old workshop is the hunter's dream. The lore of Bloodborne is... I cannot even exaggerate how convoluted it is. It's not convoluted, it's just crazy. So there's uh, some really important treasures here, so let's go ahead and find those. There's like a chest hidden, tucked in a corner here that I want to open. I can never really remember where it is. Is it over here? Is it over here? Oh, it's right here where the messenger bath was. Right, okay, so we get this chest here. This gives us the doll set. 
I think if you wear the doll armor and speak to the doll in the dream, she gives you like a special emote or something. So we're going to come over here and get the old hunter bone. The old hunter bone is the first spell of the game. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and equip that onto my hotbar here. You need 15 blood tinge in order to use it. So spells in Bloodborne require uh, blood tinge, but they are also used as items. So they, I'm pretty sure they use Quicksilver Bullets. Yeah, so Quicksilver Bullet use four, unlimited use. So Old Hunter Bone is a really cool item um, that basically makes it so your dodges turn you invisible. And you, I think you dodge much further. I never really used too many spells, but um, yeah, so that's basically the first spell of the game. But you do need some Blood Tinge in order to use it. I um, just want to see if I could read that one more time. It is said that he was an apprentice to Old German, uh, the bone of an old hunter whose name is lost. Apprentice to Old German and a practitioner of the art of quickening, a technique particular to the first hunters. It is most appropriate that hunters, carriers of the torch who are sustained by the dream, would tease an old art from his remains. So, yeah, really cool. Uh, but if you have enough blood tinge, go ahead and use it. All right, so also in here, we have one third umbilical cord. Uh, I'm not going to consume it until the end. You can consume it now. It doesn't change anything. But you want to consume it before fighting the final boss. Because once you kill the final boss, you'll get the real final boss. As long as you have consumed three, one-third of umbilical cord. Okay. And then here we have an abandoned doll. If you look closely at her hand, you'll notice that her finger moves. Yep, there it is. Her index finger moves. So it's a little weird. Maybe she's responding to you. Um, okay, so then we also have a small hair ornament, which you can give to the doll. Uh, and then we have a lamp here as well. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to quickly go back to the dream, and then we're going to sort of restart this process a bit. But instead of jumping down to the abandoned old workshop, um, we are going to instead go further down into the uh, through the tower, just through a different method. This way we can um, get all the treasure. Okay. So we can give the doll this small hair ornament, and she says this. I, I can't remember. Not a thing, only I feel a yearning, something I never felt before. What's happening to me? <gasps> Tell me, Hunter. Could this be joy? Ah. <sighs> Okay, so she gives us the Tear Stone, which, if we use, we get a Blood Gem. So we get the Tear Blood Gem. I'm not sure if we can use that on the axe or not. We can. Okay, so it uh, gives us continuous HP recovery plus 2, and then physical attack up plus 0.7. So not a great gem, but interesting nonetheless. Okay, I don't think I have enough blood echoes to level up. Very well, then. No, I don't know. I'm 1800 off, so I'm not going to bother with that just yet. So let's go ahead and warp back to uh, Cathedral Ward. And then while we do that, I'm just going to very, very quickly look up Eileen's quest line because there is a specific interaction with her that I don't want to miss. I want to show you how to do her entire quest line in this. Um, From the Cathedral Ward lamp, head straight out, immediately turn left when you exit the door. You must have opened two gates first, the large gate in the circular area towards the Cathedral. Okay, got it. So we can't actually do it just yet. All right, cool. So, um, all right, so we're going to go back up this elevator. Great. Recall it, and then, like I said before, we're just going to drop further down into... Um, into the tower, but through a different method of dropping or a different route of dropping. This way we get all the treasure. Don't forget about the guy with the minigun in this wheelchair here. And take care of him. Don't forget to loot his bullets. All right. Run, 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 run through here. Avoid everybody. And then once you're basically at the base of the stairs, you can quickly catch everybody there. And now we can ignore everyone else. So just drop back down here. Okay, and now we can re-enter the tower. And now we are going to drop back here. All 
right? And you can see treasures just sort of on these little rafters here. So it's very important that we drop in specific locations. This way we get all of them. So we're going to drop here. Okay, very good. Come to the end here. Just want to make sure I don't forget anything. Come to the end here. And then we're going to drop here. Great. And now we get the messenger top hat. So another top hat for the messengers. I think it's different than the pre-order top hat, if I'm not mistaken. All right, then we can drop here. And then we're, do we're just going to go down, 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 down. You're not really going to uh, mess anything up here. So go ahead and drop here. Great. Madman's knowledge. And it's sort of a tease that there's a door there for you to see. Uh, so most people do this the other way around. They drop down first. So the next platform that we got to drop into is right here. Great. Now we're going to heal up, obviously. And there is a, a beast guarding the door that we need to exit from. So I'm just double checking that we don't forget anything here. We drop here so we don't take any damage. And then this beast here can throw fireballs, which is terrifying. Pretty sure you can throw fireballs. Throw a fireball, bro. Oh, no. Dude, I want you to throw a fireball. Show the people your fire. Maybe this is Chalice Dungeon version of this enemy that shoots fire. I could have sworn this dude threw fireballs. Anyway, he's not too hard. There he is. There you go, buddy. Great job. Good boy. Alright, so we should be dead now. Yes! Oh my god, he's got 1 HP left. 80. Okay. Cool, so we get the beast rune from him. And then there's nothing else in this room. Great. So now we can open the door. And now we are on the streets of Cathedral Ward. We want to be very careful out here, though. Because there are a number of traps that will sort of try to catch you, and there's a lot of citizens just dragging their feet around here. There's dogs lurking. Crows. Gotta be careful. Alright. The rumpled yarnum hat and some sweaty clothes. I'm gonna go ahead and heal. There's a dog here. Okay, so this actually brings me to a really important uh, thing here. So, I am pretty sure... Bagman? Snatcher, okay. So the Snatchers... Um, right, okay, so it's any Snatcher. Um, snatchers appear after Bloodstarved Beast is killed. Okay, so if you have killed Bloodstarved Beast, which you really kind of have to in order to uh, come here, these enemies will start spawning in very specific locations. If you die to one of these enemies, these Snatchers, you will be brought to another area. Uh, so we will eventually die to these things, but we're not going to do it just yet. Um, so we're going to kill it for now. These guys are incredibly strong. They don't look it, but I cannot stress to you enough, they are very strong. They buff themselves up, and when they are buffed, they do a ton of damage. They are very fast. They are, like, shockingly fast. So... Oops. Spinning to winning, they don't get knocked down until the second hit. So you gotta be very, very careful with them. They oh god, yeah, their their pouch is just Oh god, dude. I don't want to die to you just yet, please. Oh my god, I didn't see that coming. Oh shit. Oh god, we died. Okay, you know what? Honest to god, that's not the worst thing in the world to happen. I'm not gonna edit this death out, because I'm gonna show you how to recover from it. At least we should get taken away. Pretty sure we do. Yes, okay, so we get this cutscene here. This cutscene, we are now basically in the Snatcher's bag, and he brings us to a jail, and he locks us in a cell. And this place is called the Hypogen Jail in Yahar Ghul, the Unseen Village. 
Okay, so there's a lot going on here. I'm basically just gonna show you um, how to get out and what to do here. There's a really great weapon in this place um, that I'll show you how to get. Uh, I will warn you though, this is like pretty high level. Um, it's, you don't really wanna be here. So I'm more or less just gonna show you how to escape. All right, you can open your cell door. You're not like completely trapped. And then on this first floor, there are no enemies. There is a note here, some lore. Madmen toil surreptitiously in rituals to beckon the moon, uncover their secrets. So this is where the lore of Bloodborne really starts to get freaky. Uh, in here, there is a woman praying. I cannot remember her name, but she's back here. She won't talk to you unless you wear church garb. So you can purchase gas coin sets where you can come back here after you've picked up the church garb. Um, and then if, you, if you're not wearing it, she will not really speak to you. If you do wear it uh, and speak with her, you can send her to Odin Chapel and then you basically rescue her and then she becomes a moderately friendly NPC, depending on who else is in there. Uh, but don't forget about her. We're gonna come back for her much later. I'm actually, it's funny, I, I do my best to like really like segment these guides and have a really good plan. But Bloodborne is one of those games that can just throw your plan in the garbage and say no. <laughs> so we're gonna come up here. Uh, there are some treasure goblins around that we wanna watch out for. I think this one's running away from us. Yep, there he is. All right. Great, let's see what he has. Twin bloodstone shards, yes, very nice. Probably upgrade our weapon again. There is a snatcher running around here. He's trying to give us the foot. Uh, he's guarding a lamp though, so we can actually leave pretty quickly here. Ooh, that was a spell that he wanted to use on us. No, oh, thank you, sir. Unfortunately, we're primarily fighting him on a staircase, which means we can't repost even after we parry. So there's his, his buff that he killed us with before. And if we were to die to him now, we would just respawn in the jail cell. So, can he not? No, he can definitely come down here. I don't know what he's like afraid of right now. Can he not? Is he too tall? I don't, I really don't think he is. This is shocking to me. I don't remember him being too tall. So I guess I'll just stand here. And we'll slowly chip away at him. Wow, that was close. All right, so that's, that's a snatcher. He's dead now. Dropping some bloodstone shards. There's another snatcher there. I could have sworn there should have been hunters here though. Anyway, there's a lamp up here that you can light and leave with. So there you go, that, that's how you escape. Um, there's a note here with some lore. Nightmarish rituals crave a newborn, find one and silence its harrowing cry. Yummy. All right, so we're gonna leave in a moment. Uh, I first wanna show you where that weapon is because you can basically run and go get it if you want. Um, I'm not gonna do that because we're gonna come back here at another time. Because uh, there's a boss here named Dark Par or Dark Beast Parl um, that we want to kill, you know, at some point. So we do need to come back here. Ugh. Yeah, he's buffed. I don't wanna fight him buffed. They get up so fast. Oh God, dude. Ugh. Yeah, I, I know I messed that one up. Holy shit. Oh God, and a Witch of Hemwick joining in on the fun. Ugh, you son of a bee sting. I hate you. All right, so I have died many times uh, to snatchers, to dogs. And so what I'm gonna do now is since we lit the lamp, we respawn at the lamp, I'm just gonna run to the weapon and show you where it is because it is not worth doing this a million times over. Watch out for the Witch of Hemwick back here. She wants your eyes. She scoops them out with a big spoon with a hook on it. Lovely. Okay, so what we're doing is we're basically gonna run to our deaths, but we're running to a weapon. And this weapon is the Tenitris, and it's a really cool electricity weapon that a lot of people like using. 
You can see I died to a dog. He's got my souls, which is humiliating. That's okay. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to try to aggro this guy, and hopefully the dogs, you know, try to pay attention to what we're doing here. Yes, okay, we got it. That's fine. <laughs> I don't care if we die. Oh, maybe, maybe we're going to live. Ooh. Oh, no. I think we'll actually survive this. I think. We'll see. So that's the Tenitris. There's a pig over here that I definitely want to not deal with. Oh my god, she followed us so far. Okay, this actually isn't good. I ran past the door I needed to go through. So this is the Witch of Hemwick. She's got a big spoon. She wants our spells. Or, she wants our eyes. Oh my god, dude, the pig? I have never seen the pig run up here. That's good, though. We came, we saw, we conquered. That's fine. We're gonna get the hell out of Yahar Ghoul in, in the Hypogean Jail. We're getting the hell out of here, and we're gonna proceed through the rest of Cathedral Ward now. I've wasted enough time here. I'm editing out most of it, but that was crazy. All right. So we're gonna respawn with the lamp, and then we'll just... We'll use the lamp. Return to the Hunter's Dream. Like I said, if you want... You can purchase gas coins, armor set, and then um, speak to the woman in the jail. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to go to Cathedral Ward. <laughs> we're going to go back to the streets. The streets is where it's happening. And then we're going to go... Um, we're going to proceed through the streets and then actually be able to enter Cathedral Ward proper. Sort of like an infiltration mission is what we're doing now. All right, so back in Cathedral Ward. Let's go ahead and pull the crank to bring the elevator back. I like how this elevator isn't actually on anything. It's literally just a floating platform, which is quite surprising for a From Software game. Usually their elevators make a lot of sense, at least mechanical ones. They were definitely like weird floaty ones in Dark Souls 1, especially um, in Quaylag's Domain and Demon Ruins. But I don't know, usually an elevator that has a crank is fully mechanical, or fully mechanized, whereas in Bloodborne, they're just kind of not. Ooh, that was close. Okay. Back at the Healing Church workshop. I'm gonna drop down. Drop down again. And then we gotta do our little dropping mini game here. Alright. Drop here. And then we can do this a bit more safely. We don't have to worry about getting any of the treasure again. So we can, just, we can drop where we need to. Okay, and then we drop here, all right, yep, drop onto this corpse, great. I'm going to heal up just to be safe, because we're going to take a big drop now into this beam, <laughs> great. And then, luckily that beast from earlier is a kill once enemy, we don't have to worry about him anymore. Okay, so now back in the streets, because that's where it's happening. It's now time to get down to business. All right, so we have we got caught up by a Snatcher. We escaped the Hypogen Jail. It's time to do this for realsies. Okay, the Snatchers stay, of course. And as you can see, there's a merry band of villagers out on the hunt. I don't know why he doesn't take them. I feel like the, the Snatchers are only looking for hunters, maybe. Charge R2, all sneaky-like. And then we get a free backstab. That's how backstabs work in this game. You have to stagger somebody from behind. And then you can... Uh, you basically get a repost. It's basically a free repost. It's not really even a backstab. Alright, he sits down. Oh, swing in the bag now, bro. Alright, so now that Snatcher's dead. Get some bolt paper, that's quite nice. But don't forget this like merry band of travelers over here. We're actually going to sneak up on them so we can just head back through here. All right. My mission is to kill this dog. I failed my mission, almost. All right. So these guys have really cool armor. It's quite nuts. Oh, their faces are fully transformed. That's that's the thing. That's the ticket. Alright, so don't forget about this treasure here. Some madman's knowledge. 
And then we're going to very carefully take out these couple dudes. Yeah, their faces are transformed. I really want this game to get a photo mode if it does ever get a PS5 patch. I want a photo mode. All right, so before we head on to the elevator, we're gonna walk down here and there is a new enemy. These are brain suckers. These guys are creepy little dudes who uh, will basically stick tongues out of their skulls and uh, absorb insight out of your brain while also dealing damage. They have a ton of health. They have this, oh, this shitty spell. Oh my god, they have this really shitty spell where they do that, they send orbs your way, and then they paralyze you. They can also send the orbs through the ground, which is unbelievably obnoxious. And they have like an infinite, whoa, they have like infinite stamina and infinite poise. They are just absolute menaces, and they want nothing more than the eyes in your brain, aka insight. All right. Whew. So he's guarding a fire blood gemstone. And then nothing in this well here. Great. So that's a brain sucker. Um, they're really easy to miss because they're in, I don't want to say they're in odd locations. They're not necessarily odd, but um, they can be surprising. Okay. So, yep, this is where the snatcher was. And then this is where the dog was. Okay, so now we can jump onto this elevator now. And I think this elevator might have two exits, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully I don't give you motion sickness doing this. I'm just checking here. No, it does not. Okay. But this elevator brings us into the Cathedral Ward. And then we can now drop from this platform here. And we can open the gate leading back to Odin Chapel. All right, so you can see that his lamp is lit now that I have, I think, above 10 insight. Or no, sorry, I think it's uh, 14 insight or 15 insight you need in order for the lamps to do different attacks. Oh my God, the sticks these guys use, the church doctors, they're nuts. All right, so you may have found this gate already and I'll show you where it leads, but there's a corpse here that has a wooden shield on it. Don't ever use that, it's a joke. I mean that sincerely. It is a complete joke of a shield. It's not meant to be used. All right, so now we have a church hunter or a church doctor here, but there are also crows. Yep, right there. I'm trying to, there we go. Okay, so this is, oh God, yes, the snatcher. I didn't think, I really didn't think I would aggro him that quickly. Damn it, <laughs> that was crazy. I can't parry this dude fast enough. Jesus. Oh, how dare you kick me. Ugh. Okay, so yeah, I've, I didn't want to aggro the Snatcher. This is usually the Snatcher that uh, catches most people because he's right outside the door of Odin Chapel. Come on, bud. Come here. There you go. What? That was weird. I like just hopped right through him. That was really strange. Sit down. Sit down again. Oh, he told me to sit down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's gonna come flying at me. Ooh, wow, and I got a repost on him. Damn, that was pretty lucky. Okay, how about some vials, sir? Or some bullets? No, bloodstone shards, okay. Anywho, now we can deal with the church doctor safely and peacefully. Ugh, man, that's a lot of damage. Okay, so we now have this door back to Odin Chapel. And so we don't really have to you know, do too much to get back to where we were now. We have the gate open, 
We're going to open another gate in a minute, and that will cause Eileen the Crow to spawn here. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, so there's a corpse here. Pebble. And then there's some stuff back here. Right? Yep. A madman's knowledge. Okay. The Snatcher will not follow you if you just sort of, like, hug this staircase and just keep running up. The Snatcher will shouldn't follow you. I'm really surprised he sort of jumped out at me like that before, though. Okay, so what I recommend doing is coming up here first, and we're basically going to go um, towards the top of the staircase. And there are... There's a Scythe Church Doctor here. He sucks. Yeah, he does a lot of damage. He's annoying. That's nice. Drop some blood vials. That's kind of him. Uh, but there are several church doctors here that are going to try to ruin our day. Oh, I don't know where he went. Okay, here he is. So this guy has a really, really nasty repeating pistol that you don't want to have to deal with. So luckily we got a good, good riposte on him. Um, but there's another church doctor here now. All right, so he's going to show up. Oh, there's two. Hey, how you doing? Okay, so luckily we're going to be able to take these guys out. Pretty easily. <gasps> what the fuck? Is he not dead? Oh, he is now. Wow, he must have had like one HP left. That was weird. Okay, so there's also a church guardian there. Um, he has a big old axe, so that's terrifying. Um, <laughs> what we need to do is open that gate right there, so we're going to try to do that like this. That did nothing. Yeah, I know. I know. Surprised it wasn't a repeating hit. Do that one more time. No, nope, yeah. Not that one. Do the overhead smash, bro. Not that. That, yeah, there you go. No, not that. These guys groan like they're in so much pain. Yeah, not that. That. There you go. You have a huge recovery from that, bro. That's what I needed you to do. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, I know. Ooh, big angry, are you? Yes, great. Okay. Cool, so he's dead now. These guys usually drop some vials. Great. Okay, and then there's no treasure here, right? Nope. Okay, so we can come down here, and then we can open... Can we open this gate? Yes, we can, right here. And then there's a dog over here that... I recommend taking care of. Great. For this treasure. Thick cold blood. Okay. We have several church guardians here. That we're going to take care of. Plenty of madman's knowledge. You don't have to actually clear this out. What you could do if you like. Is just wait until after you kill the boss of Cathedral Ward. And then these guys go to sleep. And they literally won't bother you. Shit. I keep hearing the other one. I don't really know where he is. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Yeah, there it is. Very loud. Okay. This might be a mistake. No. I wasn't sure if that would work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. A couple more of those. We're good to go. Oh, wow. That was a big swing, buddy. Cool. So he's down. Great, we get another Bloodstone Shard, and then we can now open this gate. Just want to check to make sure I haven't missed anything. Yep, over here. Madman's Knowledge. Madman's Knowledge. And then there's two paths through here. We have a Church Doctor here. 
that we will take care of. Yeah, I'm gonna take care of him first because he has a flame sprayer. Yep. And that thing sucks. Oh, shove it. Okay. Cool, so now we can open this gate from the other side. Perfect. Opening that gate um, basically summons um, Homegirl. Um, Eileen the Crow. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot her name for a second. Don't forget about this crow. Speaking of crows. All right. And if you follow this path down there towards the other church, Doctor, you will head towards the Forbidden Woods, but you can't actually go there yet until you defeat Vicar Amelia. You need a password to open the door, and you don't learn the password until after killing Amelia and touching uh, Ludwig's skull. So instead of doing all that, we're going to come down this area here. And there are many enemies in here, including... There's a brain sucker somewhere. There he is. Hey, bud. Wow, that was nice. It's very rare to get reposts on these guys. Oh, they're so weak to them, though. They're so weak to critical hit hits that it's it's unfair. Cool. They usually drop Quicksilver bullets. Some twin bloodstone shards. All right. And we can sort of proceed through this area now. Shining coins, right? Just want to check here. No, I don't, I don't need to go. Oh, shit. Yeah, I don't need to go there. Damn, <laughs> that was rough. Okay. We're going to come through here. Obviously, you can hear, like, a lot of beasts and whatnot. So, that should just be a, a warning to you that this area is quite fierce. All right. We got a tempering blood gem. Oh, this is actually the route to the woods. I'm so sorry. Okay. Big whoops on my part. That's weird. Um, okay, so I made a little mistake. That's okay. Got some twin bloodstone shards uh, for our troubles. So what we're going to do is we're going to go where that old church doctor was. Like, like I've mentioned a couple times in, in these walkthroughs so far, um, I feel like I have a very strong knowledge of Bloodborne and enemy placement and, and strategy, but uh, I admittedly don't know it as well as I know uh, Dark Souls. So it's, it, it's going to happen where I just sort of forget, you know, a winding path or something. Apologies. Okay, so we're gonna walk down here. Great. Get a poison knife. These are throwing knives that have poison on them. I never really use them. But we're gonna come to the streets here, and there are a few people to talk to. So there's this person here. Oh my. This is, I think, Annalisa. No, not Annalisa. I forget her name. But. Basically, she is a woman of the night. Um, and if you knock on her door enough times, she will ask you for a safe place. I think you have to defeat Bloodstar Beast, um, but we can send her to Odin Chapel. And then, why do I keep doing this? I think it's like a motion control thing. Anyway, so we send her to Odin Chapel, and then there's this guy here. This is a an old man. And... Unfortunately, um, I don't have Yosefka's clinic as a safe place just yet. Um, but basically with this guy, you need to send him... You need to tell him the opposite place where you need him to go. So you want to send him to Odin Chapel, but in order to do that, you have to tell him to go to Yosefka's clinic. It's kind of annoying. He's like just... He doesn't believe you. He's always going to do the opposite of what you tell him. Uh, but that's basically what you got to do. So... I'm trying to think very, very fast how to get him to go there without, like, wasting too much time. Because I do want to show you him. Maybe what I'll do is once I kind of clear out this area, I will, uh... I'll just quickly run to Yosefka's clinic and, uh, you know, speak with the imposter. I thought I had done that, actually, but I guess not. All right, so we got a beastie here, but there's also a dude with a, a rifle in the background there, so you got to be careful. All right. I don't even know what he's holding. I, I really couldn't even tell you what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's got a big gun. We're going to quickly take care of him. And then this guy wakes up, and there is an armor set right here. So this is the Black Church set, and if we take this to Hypogen Jail and speak with the woman there who's praying in the corner, oh, shit, 
and uh, speak with her, uh, she will join us in Odin Chapel. So we'll do that in a little bit. More poison knives there. And then basically what we need to do here is we need to run, 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 run until we are safe from getting shot. Which isn't terribly easy because there's other enemies here. Yep, such as that guy. And then there's a, a beastie here. Hey, how you doing? Great, well that was easy enough. All right, so back out here. We have some treasures. So believe it or not, when I uh, was standing up here, we had been here where there's no fence. And I sort of looked over here to see what treasures there were. And I knew where I was looking over, but I didn't realize that they weren't actually connected. Okay, I'm just gonna check for any treasure down here. I don't think there is any. No, okay, cool. So let's head back upstairs. And we are basically just gonna be back in the sort of center of Cathedral Ward now. Get an oil urn, some bullets. And now we can climb this ladder. And this is going to drop us off back in the town square, pretty much. The very long ladder, though. Most ladders in Bloodborne are long. Okay. So, yep, overlooking the sort of town square here. And then there's a note here that says, A watchman of Bergenworth guards the gate with a password, the sacred adage of the Grand Cathedral. So this is basically our hint of what we need to do next, and, like, we need to go get the password. Um, alternatively, if you walk all the way down to the door to Forbidden Woods, um, you'll be told, you'll be asked for a password. Okay, so we're going to drop here, drop here onto this roof. Great. Get some bullets. And then that's it. Okay, so now we're back uh, where that dog is, right? We have the stairs to the Grand Cathedral. What I'm going to do now is I am actually, I, I really, really want to... Uh, to successfully get the, um, uh, what am I trying to say? I really want to get the old man. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to climb up this ladder here. This is just on the other side of this gate. That bell right there is to summon an NPC for the boss. But we're going to come up here, and then we're going to get the Numbing Mist. This is basically the Lloyd's Talisman of Bloodborne. It makes it so your enemies cannot heal, right? Then we can drop here. Great. And then drop again onto this roof. And then there's a corpse here, which has the black messenger hat, which I'm pretty sure I already have. So I feel like they put the pre-order items into the game. Anyway, that's all the treasure of Cathedral Ward. So now that we've done all that, right, sorry, the corpses just got replaced. Okay, so now that we've done all that, let's quickly, 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 I'm going to leave everything dead and I'm going to make this run manually because I don't want to have to deal with any of these enemies anymore. All right, so... Oh, let's just double check for Eileen. I don't think she shows up until you've actually um, rested at a lamp. She... Oh, she is here. Great. Let's go ahead and speak with her. Oh, hello there. Perfect timing. I must warn you not to go near the tomb below Erden Chapel in the Cathedral Ward. Henrik, an old hunter, has gone mad. And he's my mark. Don't go near the tomb. Okay, so Eileen tells us not to go below Odin Chapel because there's a hunter down there named Henrik, and uh, Henrik has gone crazy. So, um, all right, I'm just looking, quickly looking at her, uh, quickly looking at her wiki entry. Killing Parl may cause her to disappear. Killing the Witch of Hemwick before speaking to her in Cathedral War will not affect her being Tomb of Odin. Lamp will not be accessible. Right, okay. So, we're actually going to do something a little fun here. Eileen has warned us not to go below... Odin Chapel. We're going to do that anyway, because it's actually on our way. And she has told us that Henrik is her mark. And what that means is she doesn't want help killing him. However, we kind of... We want to help her, but we don't want to hit her too many times in the process. 
Otherwise, she will be hostile. So, I'm not 100% sure if Henrik is here already. Okay, yeah, we definitely have to rest at a lamp in order to make this happen. Oh no, he's here. But Eileen isn't. Where is Eileen? Okay, okay. Here she is. Wow, that's so sick. I've never actually seen this play out like this. So let Eileen do most of the work. But if you notice her start to get into trouble, you want to help. You don't want to engage Henrik unless Eileen's at a distance. But as you can see, she's got the Blades of Mercy, and oh my god, are they strong. Oh shit, I died. Okay, so since I died anyway, um, what I'm going to do is just... Uh, Okay, so I died uh, fighting Henrik. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this a bit quicker. Since I died anyway, I am going to warp to Yusefka's clinic. This way I can just send people there and, you know, not have to worry about doing this all over again. So you want to warp to the first floor sick room. And then after we do that, um, we are going to run to Gascoigne's room. Um, right, so let's go ahead and run up the stairs and we will speak with the imposter Yusefka. And she will tell us, hey, you know, um, if you find any survivors, um, if you find any survivors, send them my way. We never want to do this. Um, we really never want to do this at all. It's, it's a trap. If you send people here, they will die. Okay, so let's quickly run out here. And then go through here, All right? And then we're gonna kill this guy. Great. Now we're gonna run up the ladder. Okay. And then we're gonna quickly run through the aqueduct to Gascoigne's room. You cannot use the lamp while Henrik is in the room. The lamp will become accessible. And that, they basically do that to make it so, like, you don't get jumped, you know, as soon as you enter the room. Um, okay. Cool. So I'm actually going to kill these guys, because I feel like I've used a lot of blood vials in the past little while. You know, these guys have not once dropped Shining Coins, which has been so nice. Okay. Nice. I sent the elevator back up. My past self helped my future self. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to help Eileen take down Henrik. And despite her asking us not to do this, I'm pretty sure Henrik will kill her if we don't. He's slightly stronger than Eileen. It's probably possible for Eileen's AI to be better than Henrik's AI. I just really can't remember. Um, I've never not helped out, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Dude, light the ball. What are you doing? Oh, okay, now you light it. Great job, dummy. You're supposed to help me out. Um, anyway, so I've never uh, not helped out, so I'm not 100% I'm not sure if Eileen can take Henrik on his own. However, we need to help um, anyway, because then she will thank us. Oh, whatever. No, I definitely have to kill these things, because otherwise they're going to follow me. Alright. Blood vials. Blood vials, great. So, let's go ahead and take down Henrik. Yep, see, they're already fighting now. So it's up to us to help Eileen. They're going at it. Eileen's Blades of Mercy are just... A weapon of wonder. I don't understand. Oh, shit. I don't understand, like, why they're so good. 
All right, see, I just hit Eileen there. That's not good. You don't want to hit Eileen too much. Otherwise, she will turn hostile towards you. See, she can, like, really kind of take care of Henrik on her own. But you really don't want to hit her too many times. Oh, God. Come on, Eileen, go for it. Yeah, slice him up. Slice him up. There you go. Okay, so Eileen is friendly to us still. It's very, very tricky to make sure you don't hit her too much. All right, we get the air rune from Henrik. Eileen walks away, and then we get some dialogue from her near the lamp. All right, here we go. That wasn't necessary of you, but you have my thanks. We made it with our lives. You're not bad at all. You must have killed Gascoigne as well, then. He was falling apart, I'm sure it had to be done. But try to keep your hands clean. A hunter should hunt beasts. Leave the hunting of hunters to me. Mm. Eileen the Crow, the most badass character in the entire game. <laughs> Alright, so she gives us the approval. Um, and then that also allows us to utilize the lamp here uh, once again. Got to be careful, though, because she can die to kill uh, Henrik if you're not careful. Right now, I'm just going to warp back to the dream really fast. This way, I can level up my weapon using those shards that we found. Cool. Uh, do we have any extra blood gems that are like useful to us? I don't really think so. We did, we got a level two tampering, tempering blood stem gem. Tempering blood gemstone, Jesus. So we'll go ahead and slot that in there. And then let's fortify our weapon. Great. Cool, so now that's a plus four. And then we can also check out the ribbon, the ribbons that we've gotten. Um, black messenger hat, messenger top hat. What's this one? Is this like a not crumpled top hat? It is a not crumple top hat. Okay, those are very regal. Some Abraham Lincoln top hats. Okie doke. Cool. So let's go ahead and spend some blood echoes with the doll. Okay, and then let's go to 20 vitality. Great. And then let's warp back to Cathedral Ward. And then we will send the old man to the chapel. And... I should also send um, Homegirl to the chapel. I think that's what I'll do now. I'll actually send uh, the woman from the jail to the chapel. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I want to find out her name. Hypogen Jail. Uh, what is her name? What is Homegirl's name? I never remember it. Yeah, Hypogen Jail. Great. Uh, Hypogen Jail. What is her name? Adela. Adela is her name. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to change our armor and we are going to equip the Black Church set. Surgical long gloves, Black Church trousers slash dress. Right. So this set actually changes based on your gender. So since we are playing as a female, uh, the set gives us a dress instead of pants. All right, so back in the prison, we can just sort of retrace our steps here. And now Adela will speak to us since we are wearing the church set. Any church set will do, black, white, or gas coins, doesn't matter. All right, hello. Yes, okay. So she asks us for a safe place. Thank life for there for many of them. Okay, so she knows about Cathedral Ward. She doesn't ever go to uh, the other place. Let me just double check that. So then the streets of that bat gate. Okay, so we gotta ask her again. Send her to Odin Chapel. I don't know why this happens. Maybe I'm hitting X too fast or within some like speed. Back to you. 
Okay, great. Cool. So now let's just head back to the lamp, and then she will be in Odin Chapel. And her and, uh, I think her name, not Annalisa, why can I never remember her name? Uh, the Woman of the Night, who we sent to Odin Chapel, uh, she and Adela do not get along. Um, since uh, Adela is a prostitute, the Woman of the Church does not does not like the woman of the night. Um, or sorry, uh, Adela does not like her. So Adela's a nun, and uh, Ariana is the woman of the night. So there you go. Okay. Where's the doll? Is the doll over here with German? Sometimes they move. Dude, where's the doll? German's here. The doll is not here. I don't know where the doll went. I wonder if this is a glitch. Sometimes she, like, tends to the flowers, I think. Well, anyway. Uh, okay, so now that we've done that, let's go back to Cathedral Ward, and then we're gonna send the old man to Odin Chapel. Um, okay, cool. So now we have Adela. Uh, maybe Adela won't. Okay, so Adela appears here. She thanks us. We get the church bow. And then she gives us her blood. Uh, I'm gonna deny it though. I don't. I don't want it. Um, okay. So, her and uh, Ariana have a really like a bad relationship. And basically, if you look at Adela right now, let me take out the monocular. Right. So I'm going to use the monocular to sort of zoom in here. And right. So when I speak with Adela. Or when I speak with Ariana, look what Adela does. Oh, hello, dear. So Adela starts eavesdropping on us. And she hates Ariana, straight up. It's such a weird little interaction that you don't even know is happening if you're not paying very close attention. So uh, we can take her blood or not. Um, we're going to deny it for now. But I just want to double check that we don't need... Um, Yeah, we don't actually need her at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to kill Adela. Um, you don't have to, but I need Ariana alive. Um, so, sorry, honey. Right. Cool. So, doing that, we get the Odin Writhe rune. And this scares the hell out of the old woman, I guess. Right. I guess we just murdered somebody in front of her, so she's she's scared. All right, so now that we've done that, uh, let's go ahead and equip our hunter set again. Okay, and we're just going to run straight to the old man. We're going to ignore the church doctor. We're going to ignore the snatcher over there. We're going to ignore these church doctors up here. They are not important to us. And now we're just going to run into the alleys. We're going to ignore the church hunter. Oh, I forgot about this treasure. Oh, some more thick cold blood. Ignore these guys. Hopefully they don't stab me. All right. Okay, great. We're going to keep run, 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 run. Actually, I, I can go this way and just drop down. Yeah, that'll work. Ignore the, the brain sucker. Ugh. Ooh, yikes. Big yikes, buddy. Hello? Shit, that was close, dude. 
Oh my god, that was wildly close. That was not comfortable. I thought I was going to die there. Lots of treasures, though, for me. Okay, let's head down. And then we got the guy with the gun, and there's probably a beast with him. No? The beast left? That's nice. Okay, so the beast... Is the beast in the streets, or is he about to jump me? Why wasn't the beast with him? I guess we'll find out. Okay, so don't forget about the enemies sort of lurking in the steam here. There's this guy. He's just sleeping. Okay, this guy with the fish hook. And then that should be it. Okay, so Ariana has left her house. There's going to be no response there. We're going to speak to the old man. And then he... Since we told Ariana about the shelter... Um... We want to tell the old man, since we told Ariana about the shelter, he overheard us and says, hey, tell me where it is. Uh, but we're going to tell him to go to Yusefka's clinic because then he's actually going to head to Odin Chapel. Okay, yeah, so he thinks we're lying. He just thinks everybody's lying to him. Okay, so that's done. Cool. Uh, what we're going to do now is we are going to fight the boss finally. This has been a bit of a runaround walkthrough, if I'm being honest. I'm not really happy with how this walkthrough has come out. Um, but unpredictable things happen in Bloodborne, and that's fine. I always, you know, try to make up for it with timestamps and everything, but this this walkthrough has definitely kind of gone off the rails. It was not well organized. Well, it was well organized, but then things happened. All right, so we're going to drop here, kill this dog. Nope. Hey, bud. Great. All right. Some blue elixir. Groovetastic. All right, so I'm just going to run past all these guys. Oh, I, I said I was going to, and then I just didn't, so I'm a liar. Ugh. Now I got both of them on me. Mr. Repeating Pistol over here. Come on. I don't know why I'm doing that. Okay, cool. Refill our bullets. Great. All right, so we have some crucifix church hunters here, or church doctors. These guys luckily just sort of point for the first couple minutes, uh, but they are the first enemies in the game that deal frenzy damage. And if you have high insight, they're going to deal even more frenzy damage to you, which is bad. If the frenzy meter maxes out, you will just take a ton of damage. It's sort of like bleed um, the higher your insight, the more frenzy damage you will take. Before I open the door to the boss, I want to tell you something. If you go left, there is another place that you can go to called Hemwick Charnel Lane. It's just down there. That'll be the next walkthrough. If you like, you can go down here, um, down this path. There will be a couple of hunters for you to fight, but you're going to run into a dead end. Um, that dead end opens up much later in the game, so I'm leaving it. All right. It is now time to fight Vicar Amelia. Vicar Amelia is a ferocious boss that takes no prisoners. Very similar to Cleric Beast, you want to hit Amelia in her hand, the big hand that's on the ground. Um, one thing to watch out for, though, is that she can heal. So what I recommend doing is equipping the Numbing Mist that she picked up earlier... And uh, the Numbing Mist prevents her from healing. The heal is very, very obvious. Uh, she glows white. Um, she can be... Excuse me. She can be staggered after you deal a lot of damage. Very similar to Cleric Beast. Um, and the lower her health, the more erratic she becomes. So there you go. This is Vicar Amelia. All right. So, you get the... Oh, God, I thought I was far enough away from that. But she jumps, 
she's a lot of fun. She's she's a party in a in a glass. I think that's what they used to call Snooky on Jersey Shore. <laughs> oh, dude, come on, that's just that's not fair. Oh, oh, it's a shockwave. I'm an idiot. I just totally forgot about that. Oh, what? Are you choking me? She's always screaming. She's always just so loud. I mean, we get it. You know, we, we get it. We're the ones who get it. You never want to be in a corner against Amelia, and you never want to lock on to Amelia. Locking on to big bosses in Bloodborne is a mistake. It's a mistake in all Souls games. You never want to do it. Dude, I'm, I'm just going to have to violently disagree with what's happening here. Alright, so we got some good bonus damage on her from that. That's not the heal, but that basically means that she is now able to cast spells, and she will begin healing if we are not careful. So go ahead and throw a Numbing Mist at her, and then as long as it lands, a mist will sort of surround her, and then she will not be able to heal. Okay, we got a Repost here, so let's try to get in front of her. Great. Oh, nice. We got a good critical off on her. All right. She's gonna howl. Ugh, yikes. Not good. Big slam coming. Yep. What? What is happening, dude? You throw another numbing mist her way? Yep. She would have just tried to heal. Dude, I I don't understand. I'm gonna try for rally here. It's a big mistake though. I shouldn't have done that. Yep. Oh man, we got another repost. How lucky of us. Whenever she drops her head, you you just want to go for the head. It deals so much damage to her. Yeah, as as you can tell. Alright, so she's probably gonna try to heal one more time, so I think that numbing miss landed. If not, I'll just try another one. Alright, that one definitely landed. Right, so she has a bite. Luckily, it doesn't do much. Right, so since that was the heal, she, like, puts her hands together to pray, but since uh, she has Numbing Mist surrounding her, it doesn't do anything. All right, so I only have a few more Blood Vials left, so I want to be very careful with these last few hits. Ugh, shit. Oh, oh, no. Oh, not good, dude. One more hit. Okay, that is Vicar Amelia. That got so close. Wow, that was wild. All right, so killing Vicar Amelia gives us the gold pendant, which has a blood gem in it. And then we also get a lamp. But most importantly, I want to show you something. So we're going to light the lamp. We'll just light it for now. It's for the looks. I just bite it. Um, okay, so touching this object here, or inspecting this object here, causes the next chain of events to open up. So I'm going to show you something. Um, I mentioned this, I think, after killing Gascoin. Certain things, um, certain, yeah, doing certain things triggers the time of day to change. So notice here how it's sort of like evening, right? This is the last time in the game where you will see any sort of sunlight. Because once we touch this skull, night will fall over Yarnum. Basically, it, it's not like an event or anything. It's just like the time of day changes. The next time of day change, however, is quite the event. Um, but for now, we're going to touch this skull. I'm going to skip this long cutscene. But basically what happens is we learn the password that gives us access to the Forbidden Woods. And you get it in that cutscene. It's not really a password you have to remember. More or less what happens is after triggering that cutscene, uh, the password becomes an option when asked for it. So, But as you can see, it is now nighttime, and this is a pretty cool um, time of day. Everything looks really like dark and gray. Also, 
some enemies change. This church hunter is now uh, asleep. Oh, wow, that was effing close. Oh my god. So the church hunters go to sleep at this point because, I don't know, maybe it's just nighttime and they're tired. I'm not trying to sound silly, but I think it might just be that they're nighttime and tired, or they feel like they have nothing left to defend since Amelia is dead. Um, but yeah, they don't wake up unless you get really close to them. Like that. Also, what winds up happening is, uh, since we have more than 15, um, since we have more than 15 insight, oh boy, didn't want that to happen. Since we have more than 15 insight, the lamps of the church doctors now have spells. So you can see it's glowing pretty hard, and I'm gonna try to bait out the attack here. Hopefully he should just hold his lamp towards us. It's a ranged attack, so I gotta try to stay somewhat far away. Oh, come on, dude. Well, I don't know if it's gonna happen. I wanted it to happen really badly. Yeah, I guess I'm not gonna get my wish. That's okay. Just know that the higher your insight, uh, basically the lamps change. <laughs> so, all right, with that out of the way, Let's go ahead and go back to Odin Chapel. This way we can save and then end the walkthrough. And you'll be able to see all the changes that have happened. You know, this guy has a lamp, now that I'm thinking about it. Doesn't he? Doesn't that guy have a lamp? I don't know. I feel like a fool right now. <laughs> I feel like I just can't ever remember what happens in Bloodborne. So the Snatcher's still over there. Gotta be careful of him. It's okay. Alright, so he's gonna start walking towards us, but we're gonna duck into Odin Chapel here and he won't be able to hurt us. Alright, so the old woman is still freaking out because we killed Adela in front of her. Let's go back to the Hunter's Dream and we will end the walkthrough here. So, apologies that, apologies that this sort of got a little crazy, but there's so many branching paths of Bloodborne and so many of them intersect without you really knowing, especially when it comes to, um, you know, Hypogen Jail and Yahargul. Like, it's it just gets crazy. So, it's not something you can always, like, necessarily predict is going to happen, but it happens. Okay, so we're going to end the walkthrough here at level 32. Oh, wow. There is an item here right now. This is the DLC item. I'm not gonna pick it up just yet. Um, I'll pick that up in the next walkthrough and just sort of show. Actually, I'm not gonna pick it up at all. I'm not gonna pick it up till I'm ready to go, uh, till I'm damn well ready to go to the DLC, which is not going to be until basically the end of the game because it is such a huge difficulty spike. Okay, that's it for this part of the walkthrough, part four. We went through Cathedral Ward. We entered Yahargul, the Unseen Village and Hypogen Jail. We rescued some people from Hypogen Jail and uh, from the streets of uh, Yarnum. I'm just gonna double check to make sure that the old woman isn't like permanently afraid of us now. I don't think she will be, but... Um, I think she's just starting to go a little crazy, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll just check on her real fast. No, okay, so she's not afraid, but she is starting to go a little crazy. She says, how do we get, ever get into this mess? And then we can talk to her a little bit. And then, um, I'm not sure if she offers us sedatives here. No, she, she doesn't offer sedatives here. She offers those to us later. Anyway, enough of this. We're gonna end the walkthrough here. Part four is done. In part five, we will go to Hemwick Charnel Lane, which is, it's totally optional, but there's a very important item there that we gotta get from the boss. And that allows us to uh, affix runes to our character which will come in handy because they're like great buffs and can change the way you play the game. But that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Bloodborne, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.